Now, International Migrants Day is commemorated every year on December the 18th. The day is set aside to highlight the contributions made by international migrants and internally displaced persons and the challenges they face. Now, according to the United Nations, the number of migrants globally reached the 272 million in 2019. Migrants have been at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19. Their work in health, transportation and food services have made lives in this pandemic more bearable. The theme for this year is Reimagining Human Mobility. With me in the studio is Ajibola Abayomi. He is the president of the Journalist International Forum for Migrants. And from our Abuja studio, we have uh, George Galindo, Public Information Officer of the International Organization of Migration. Good morning and thank you. I'll start with you, George. Thank you for joining us on uh, TVC Breakfast. Uh, let's begin with if we are to reimagine uh, migration, what it will look like, because uh, year in, year out, uh, migration is part of our lives. And uh, the COVID-19 has re echoed the essence for reimagining. And if we are to do that, from your point of view, what should it, what shape or perspective should it take? I don't hear anything. All right, uh, we'll get back to Jorge as uh, soon as we can. But let me bring the question to the studio now, to you, Ajibola Bayomi, which movement is part of our lives yeah. regularly. And uh, this year we are looking at reimagining uh, migration, that movement. And like the report said, the pandemic seems to have opened up to us the gaps that we need to bridge uh, over time as we get along. So talk to us, if we had to reimagine, what would it look like or what should it look like? Yeah, th th thank you for having me. Uh, let me quickly make this uh, little correction. Okay. The name of the organization is Journalist International Forum for Migration. Not okay. Migrant. Yes, yeah, your question was uh, quite uh, very thoughtful. We good enough, the United Nations is just talking about reimagining human mobility. That is we are looking at a lot of factors associated with the challenges, the prospect, and even value. For instance, we have to take our mind off the uh, negative perception about migrants because many people refer to what uh, being shown on air. On the mission issue mostly is when we have all these negative consequences. I saw you showing, I saw your show showing, uh, you know, migrants irregular migrants that yeah. are trying to cross the Material sea. But that migration is not all about that. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. In as much as we discourage totally irregular migration, we encourage safe, regular, and legal migration. What we are saying is that migration is very broad. Mm. Anybody that is moving across the shores of border, that is moving from re the place of his birth to another region. A majority of us are not in the state we were born. Uh, uh, yeah, so is. Targeting one thing, a better life. Absolutely. So migrants are economic developers all over the world. You can imagine the quantum of contributions of migrants, particularly at this time of COVID-19. Last year, let's take back a little, I was on the air, and the question that comes to me about the spokesperson of European Union in Nigeria that was saying because of criminality, the European Union will tighten the visa process for Nigerians, mm. and they will make it so stringent that Nigerians will not have access to Europe. And they are going to even repatriate some Nigerians. Okay. With the madness of COVID-19, why are they not talking about that again? You can see that migrants, particularly and Nigerians, mm. we are forefront of fighting this battle, taking all sorts of strategies, taking all sorts of uh, role, ensuring that life becomes normal. So, in one word, when we are talking about reimagining the perception of human mobility, we are also looking at migrants in another form, looking at their contribution, showcasing the new side. But of course, one thing is circumstant here. What type of migrants are we looking at? Is okay. it regular or irregular? All right, that has to be established. Let's take the conversation to Abuja studio where we have George Galindo, the public information officer for the IOM. That's the International Organization for Migration. And George, I'll pose uh, the question to you again, asking uh, the focus or the theme for this year is reimagining uh, migration. And if we are to reimagine migration, what should it look like? 
Well, first of all, greetings to you and to Mr. Ajibola, whom uh, we work with uh, very closely. Um, you know, International Migrants Day uh, this year is uh, an opportunity for us to take stock of uh, uh, the impact that COVID-19 has had on human mobility around the world. It's a golden opportunity for uh, organizations such as IOM, uh, as well as uh, governments to sit together and uh, use the tool that is the Global Compact for Migration, this UN Global Agreement, to find solutions to the main challenges of migration, to continue ensuring the, the protection of migrant, migrants' rights around the world, uh, and again to address the impacts of the pandemic, not only on health, but on the uh, economies of uh, communities of origin of, of migrants, on the uh, working and living conditions of, of migrants worldwide, many of whom during the pandemic, because of border closures, because of the restriction of movement, were stuck in oftentimes arbitrary detention with very poor access to basic ser services uh, in very unsanitary conditions, which themselves became uh, uh, hotspots for uh, COVID-19. So. It's an opportunity for us to uh, look into the, the, the main issues uh, yeah, around right. human mobility and, and try to come up with uh, forward thinking solutions. All right, uh, George, we commemorate this uh, day yearly, but uh, the challenge still remains and it seems uh, it is also being compounded by COVID-19. What are we not doing correctly and what, sh what gaps should we be bridging moving forward? I think certainly one of the main challenges that we saw during the pandemic was the toll that it had taken on the mental health of a lot of uh, migrants who had returned back to Nigeria. We noticed that beyond the impact that it had had on their purchasing power, on you know their, their businesses back home. Uh, many people also experienced uh, isolation. They experienced stigmatization and discrimination. You know, oftentimes migrants are also seen as carriers of the virus. And uh, we have to really emphasize the importance of uh, support to mental health, uh, to psychosocial uh, needs of, of migrants and, and of course because uh, during the pandemic, especially during the main months of the lockdown, we could not have access, direct access to uh, these beneficiaries. We had to come up with, with ways to, to reach out to them. So we conducted virtual counseling uh, for them, but the work is, is nowhere near done. We have to continue uh, looking at the individual needs of, of these migrants. We cannot talk about migrants as a whole. Every individual has their own needs and challenges and we have to address those particularly. Mm -hmm. And let me bring the conversation to the studio now. I, uh, when I spoke with you earlier, you talked about if we are imagining uh, migration, uh, if we have to determine which is it regular or irregular um, migrants now. Are they different in terms of if we are to reimagine, the approach has to be different? Is that what you're saying? And if it has to be different, how, what, you know, how does it go? No, uh, what measures does it take? What I'm actually saying is that right. uh, the reality is that uh, whether regular or regular is part of human life. Right. Migration is not a crime. Mm -hmm. memorial. People move from one location to another because of one reason or the other. But what I'm saying here is that there are classes of migrants. Migrants, when we say regular migrants, regular migrants are those that pass through the right channels, that go through the right process like before. But regular migrants are those who uh, did not go through the entire process, but they still have access in the system. Absolutely. We know that. Yeah. But if we have to imagine their yeah. journey, how do we do that? But what we are saying now is that if we had to reimagine what is happening now vis-a-vis -vis what is happening to migrants, mm. first, we have to look at, because all over the world, migrant issues are human rights issues. What rights do they have? What privileges are they enjoying where they are? What we are saying is that for those who are regular, well, in those environments where they take premium on you having your papers correctly, you have some basic freedom. But those who are irregular, particularly 
those who are not given the opportunity to regularize their status. We are saying those resident countries should give them opportunity to regularize their status. They are human beings like any other. For instance, when you are in Europe, you talk about health care facilities, you talk about the, the right to so many things. But if you are a regular migrant, you, there is a bar to which you can actually operate. So if we are imagining it, we are looking at a situation whereby we will get everyone on the same thing. And the ghost by the level of journalists international for population is that migration should not be looked at as a form of desperation. It should be looked at as a desire. If you want to travel, you must travel for a purpose. Mm -hmm. If you must move, we know there are factors that are fueling migration. Of course. Either regular or and irregular. Regular. That is why if we are also reimagining it, it's also bring to fore the role of government. Mm. Particularly, let me domesticate this Nigeria. Our government needs to fix this economy. Our government needs to make life more meaningful to the people. When people are not comfortable, they are bound to move to an area where they are comfortable. We must address issues of insecurity. We must address issues of jobless. We must ensure that opportunities are given to the youth. For instance, it may interest you to know what may shock you that as we speak, Nigerians are in the Indian Republic. All right. Over All right. Uh, let's quickly go to Abuja now to talk with uh, George Galindo to know his final words with uh, this issue. Now, the role of government, which you mentioned here, the role of government in reimagining uh, migration, is the IMM engaging governments uh, with regards to this? I stopped hearing her again. I'm not hearing anything. The role of government uh, at addressing these issues, these challenges, is the IOM engaging governments across the world with regards to this, if we are talking about uh, reimagining migration? The interventions that IOM conducts in Nigeria without talking about the partnership with the government, both at the federal and state level and even the local levels. And we work together very closely with a number of agencies such as NAPTIP, NCFRMI, uh, NIS itself, on implementing these um, activities, particularly in the areas where we see the uh, high number of uh, migrants returning, such as Edo, Delta, and Lagos State. But all over the country, I think it's important to have a comprehensive response, and we of course, depend uh, largely on the role of, of the government. And uh, International Migrants Day, it's also an opportunity to uh, discuss uh, migration issues with uh, the local actors via the National Migration Dialogue, which takes place every, every year also uh, on the occasion of International Migrants Day. And also to emphasize the role of the media is very important. And I'm very happy to announce as well that this year we launched for the first time ever a competition uh, called the Migration Reporter Competition because uh, the media stakeholders are just as important as IOM or uh, the government is. And we want to showcase uh, fact-based uh, journalism that will help us uh, dispel misinformation about migration, that will help us dispel xenophobia, uh, uh, stigmatization, and uh, just you know helping uh, bring out better uh, migration reporting. That's very key as well. All right, thank you, George Galindo, Public Information Officer of uh, the International Organization of Migration. And we must also thank you, uh, Ajibola Abayami, the President, the Journalists. The International uh, Forum for Migration. Okay, International Forum for, for migration. migration. Thank you for your time as well. Okay. On